turns out we shouldn't believe everything that we're taught in school either. Our textbooks are overflowing with exaggeration, misinformation, and sometimes downright lies. Can the Great Wall of China really be seen from space? Is it true that genius Albert Einstein actually failed math class in high school? What other nonsense have we been spoon-fed? Let's dive in and find out. All right, ladies and gents, let's kick off this countdown of lies. When you think of world wonders, what comes to mind first? Machu Picchu, the pyramids, or the Great Wall of China? For us, it's the latter, and for good reason. Because what other world wonder is visible from space? Exactly. But here's the thing. The so-called Great Wall isn't even that great. The truth is that it simply cannot be seen from outside of our atmosphere. Even from the moon, which in the grand scheme of the universe is relatively close, it's still invisible. According to NASA, the unaided eye cannot see the wall from a low Earth orbit, despite it being 13,170 miles long. While it is a masterpiece of ancient engineering, it is not as big as you think. In terms of width, it's only 20 feet at the bottom and 16 feet at the top. This myth first started circulating in the mid-1700s. However, that's way before we made it up onto the moon or started putting satellites into space. While over 10 million people visit the winding Great Wall of China every year, unfortunately, it's not thick enough to be seen from the stars. Myth busted. Now, if you ever took a history class at school in the USA, we're pretty sure that you've heard of a certain George Washington. No, not George Washington Carver, the man who invented peanut butter, but George Washington, the founding father who served as first president of the United States from 1789 to 1797. We've always been told of this famous tale about him and his dad in a cherry tree, and we've come to accept it wrongly as fact. If you need a quick refresher, here's the story in rapid time. Little six-year-old George Washington was given a hatchet from Dad for his birthday. George used it to cut down his dad's favorite cherry tree. Dad was mad and confronted George, who instead of denying it, said the famous words, quote, I cannot tell a lie. Here's the thing, though. I cannot tell a lie was a lie. Even though Washington was already a great dude, a biographer named Mason Locke Weems exaggerated his notable characteristics even further. Weems simply made up the tale to highlight Washington's honesty and his good nature. If we hadn't quite quenched your thirst for mind-blowing revelations about world wonders, then fret not, because we've got an absolute doozy about the pyramids coming right up here. If we asked you to tell us who built the pyramids, what would your response be? The ancient Egyptians, right? The wealthy put slaves to work, dragging incredibly heavy stones up slopes until finally they created an unforgettable landmark. Well, that's not quite true either. Sorry to burst your bubble, pharaohs, but the majority of the manpower was in fact not the slaves. That's what the 19th century scientists thought, but in reality, it was the entire healthy population of ancient Egypt. Over a span of 85 years, between 2589 and 2504 BCE, that put blood, sweat, and tears into their national icon. For those who weren't physically hauling the stone, they were preparing food for the builders, housing them, acting as security, and some even headed out on long journeys in search of stone and metal. After all of that cumulative work, it paid off. The pyramids are the only wonder of the ancient world that still stands today. If you're curious, it's these ones that are long gone. Joining the Liar Liar Pants on Fire party next is the one and the only, the totally fake Loch Ness Monster. We know this isn't exactly a giant shock because it's always been speculative evidence supporting Nessie's existence, but the real lie in this case is the so-called surgeon's photo. This photo, the one that helped Nessie to transition from an urban legend into a realistic and frightening possibility. This is the Loch Ness located in Scotland, and the stories of a mysterious creature swimming around in its waters actually go back to the 6th century CE. The first shred of evidence, well, false evidence technically, was taken by Robert Kenneth Wilson in 1934, and was assumed to be accurate for close to 60 years. However, all good things must come to an end, and in 1994, it was revealed that the shape of Nessie was nothing more than a toy submarine in disguise. What was a toy submarine doing there? Long story short, it was deliberately placed by a man named Marmaduke Weatherall. He used to work for the Daily Mail newspaper. And after they ridiculed him for writing a piece about Nessie's footprints, which turned out to be false, he got his revenge, fooling the newspaper as well as everyone else. Oh, we've actually got an entire video about Nessie. After this one, check it out. The link is in the description. Alrighty, moving on. Okay, when you think of a Viking, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Besides the boats. That's right, it's those big horned helmets. 
Uh, yeah, well, we're sorry to say it, folks, but that, too, is a lie. It's just a stereotype that emerged as the result of Vikings becoming more and more prevalent in mainstream media. As it turns out, however, historians have looked at a number of Viking tombs, and not once, not once, have they ever found a helmet that had horns. Yes, Scandinavians probably did sport some sort of headgear when they marched into battle, but there is no reason to believe that it was bedazzled with horns. In fact, that actually make it easier for the enemy to grab and remove. So where did the idea come from? The popular image of the Viking we know today actually dates back to the 1800s. It was then that Scandinavian artists like Gustav Malmström drew the horned headgear in their portrayals of the Viking people. And then, well, it, it just stuck. Speaking of unique outfits, our next fib is all about the former king of pop, Michael Jackson himself. No matter how you feel about him as a person and all the controversy surrounding him, it's impossible to deny that he had a monumental impact on the music industry. When he wasn't releasing toe-tapping, chart-topping hits, he was creating dance moves like the moonwalk that every fan around the world would try to imitate in front of their mirrors at home. Sorry to burst your moon bubble, but that captivating moonwalk wasn't actually invented by MJ. Sure, he showed it to the world when he was performing Billie Jean at the Motown 25th Anniversary Live Show in 1983, but it wasn't his to show off. Jackson actually learned it from Casper Candidate and Cooley Jackson, who performed it on Soul Train in the 1970s. Even Marcel Marceau, a.k.a. Bip the Clown, showcased the move prior to MJ. And even before those guys, the move's inaugural performance came from tap dancer Bill Bailey. Back then, it wasn't even called the moonwalk. Any guesses? The backslide. Okie dokie, so who here has ever heard of something called carbon dating? No, it's, it's got nothing to do with Tinder. It's a method used to analyze materials that once exchanged carbon dioxide with the atmosphere and decipher when that exchange happened. Uh, what? In other words, archaeologists use carbon dating to determine when things were living. We thought that this method was a great way to measure when trees, humans, animals, and plants thrived. And the professor who produced the first carbon dates way back in 1949, Willard Libby, was given the Nobel Prize. So, as you can see, the scientific world took it pretty darn seriously. But since then, scientists have actually recognized that carbon dating is subject to error. Why? Because of a variety of factors, including contamination by outside sources of carbon in the environment. This affects the natural decay and makes the evidence all a little wishy-washy. Plus, other elements like the fact that the same plant, one in America and one in Greenland, for example, can grow in different eras due to things like temperature variations. So if carbon dating isn't actually accurate, then a lot of history as we know it could in fact be a lie. Spooky! Okay, you might not be old enough to remember this, we certainly aren't, but there was a time where the big tobacco companies ran advertising campaigns that said, and we are not kidding, cigarettes are good for your health. These days we are all well aware of the health risks, so we won't dwell on them, but back in the mid-1900s, companies were getting doctor's approval to sell cigarettes. In 1951, L&M advertised their filters as just what the doctor ordered. In 1949, an advertisement for Viceroy's featured a dentist that told the customers that, as your dentist, I would recommend Viceroy's. In the 1920s and 30s, Lucky Strike used celebrity endorsements who would say things like, I protect my voice with Lucky's. And Craven A began marketing its cigarettes under the slogan, For Your Throat's Sake, as early as 1939. But as we later found out, this was nothing but lies, sprinkled with misinformation and topped with a few more lies. It worked though. In 1950s America, 45%, yes, 45% of the population smoked. By the numbers, that would have been close to 70 million people. When medicine proved the associated health risks, companies changed their advertising tactics. Instead of, we're good for you, it became, we're not as bad for you as everyone else, and you're gonna smoke anyway, so smoke our product. You know who else put out a few false claims? Thomas Edison. Would you believe that one of the most important inventors of the last 200 years 
A man famous for inventing the light bulb didn't actually invent the light bulb? It's a weird thought, isn't it? Edison managed to file an astounding 1,093 patents, but the light bulb was not one of them. In the year 1800, the first stages of light bulb technology were already in the works thanks to Alessandro Volta. Our main man, Thomas Edison, well, he wasn't even born until 1847, nearly 50 years later. A number of people added different elements to the light bulb. Warren de la Rue made Alessandro Volta's version more efficient in the 1840s. Then English chemist Joseph Swan improved it again in the 1860s. But it was Edison in 1879 who created the cost-effective finishing touches and took it to mass market. Hardly an original idea, if you ask us. Okay, from one famous inventor to another, we have no doubt that you've heard of Albert Einstein, the man famous for having a giant brain and creating the theory of relativity. Couldn't even pass math class in high school. How is this possible? It's not, it's a lie. For a long time, it was widely believed that the ingenious Einstein actually failed basic math. In truth, it was the complete opposite. He'd already mastered differential and integral calculus by the time he was 15. And just like all kids at that age do in their spare time, he came up with an alternative for the Pythagorean theory, just for fun. For a quick bonus entry, can we get a drum roll, please? This is a modern lie that pops up every...